I planned many things for 2025, but getting an iMac wasn't on that list, I can tell you that. When I first showed this setup to a friend of mine here in Oslo, who is also a developer, he said, dude, if I saw this in your video, I would think to myself, does this guy even use a Vim? I know, I'm a total fraud. But still, I will tell you as a developer that it's probably one of my favorite purchases of all time. I know what you're thinking. Marco, isn't this like your grandma's computer? You should have gone with a Mac Mini and a monitor like the rest of us. This is more like a setup for a designer. You know I thought about this, and in this video I want to make the case for the iMac. I'll tell you what my experience has been so far, and I will compare it with my damaged but still working M4 Pro MacBook Pro I got last year, and finally I'll tell you why this is my favorite purchase of all time. Plus we're going to do some benchmarking to top it off. So let's dive right in. This is a base model M4 iMac. Ever since I bought and made a video about the M4 Pro MacBook Pro, people have been asking me both in the comments and on Discord if a base model would be enough for dev work and coding. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to test this firsthand and report back to you guys so there's gonna be lots of that in this video. It comes with 8 CPU cores for performance and for efficiency, 16GB of RAM and 256GB of storage, a rather modest configuration comparing to my M4 Pro, but more on that later. When it comes to ergonomics and design, it's just spot on. The chin doesn't bother me, although if I were designing it, it wouldn't be there, and adjusting the screen is so effortless, even more so than on the MacBook Pro, which is famous for its perfectly balanced hinge. The base model only comes with two ports, which as of now is not a limitation for me because they're both Thunderbolt 4 and deliver power. And given that my mouse and keyboard are both wireless, it's not a huge concern. So some of the usual ways I connect things are one MagSafe charger for my phone and a Thunderbolt 4 cable to either connect my camera when transferring recordings or my microphone when recording. The great thing about the iMac is that it always has power, unlike my MacBook Pro, which would drain rather quickly if I connected my camera for some time. So I basically use the camera as an SD reader, and it's equally fast, plus by the time everything is copied over, the camera is usually fully charged. Now, let's talk about the reason this is my favorite purchase in a long time, and why I think it's criminally overlooked by developers. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Business Heroes is one of the most unique services I've seen in a while. Consider this, with hardware it's easy to compare different products, you can do benchmarks and tests and find out right on the spot, numbers don't lie. But what about software and services that you can really only get to know after months of usage? What payroll software is actually not garbage? What business insurance is not a scam? How do you even test that? Business Heroes is a team of real humans who dedicate their time to really understanding deeply different tools and services on the market that you need to run a business. On businessheroes.com you can find in-depth reviews and recommendations for anything, from a CRM to business loans. Check out Business Heroes using the link in the description and save yourself hours evaluating different products and potentially thousands of dollars of bad investments. I've gone full circle when it comes to displays, I've used two 27 inch 4K screens, I've worked for over 6 months on a single 14 inch MacBook Pro and now I work on a 24 inch display and I'm a very happy camper and here is why. Not only is it high resolution but it's also glossy and I thought it wouldn't make a difference back when I bought my 4K Dell displays which were matte but oh boy does the glossy display take the cake. That and the perfect macOS scaling, it's just eye candy especially if you look at text all day long like I do even though I'm a fraud and I don't use Vim. I didn't struggle with productivity itself on a smaller 14 inch MacBook Pro display, but I must admit even before I had that accident with the coffee which led to the damaged screen and the purchase of the iMac, I started looking around for an external display because hunching over the MacBook was making my posture pretty bad. But there aren't that many glossy displays out there. Now I know what you're thinking, why not get the Apple Studio display or a glossy OLED? Simply put, they are expensive for what they are. I'd need a whole lot more investment into this desk setup to be fully operational, but besides that, what really made my mind is this. In the store, coincidentally, they had the iMac and the studio display right next to each other. I didn't have my camera at the time to film it, but one thing I noticed was that the iMac had much better color uniformity than the studio display. The light bleeding was very noticeable on the studio display, whereas on the iMac it's virtually not there. And compared to an OLED, 
The iMac has far superior text clarity, which is again very important for coding, even for people who don't use Vim. And there is no risk of burning, which I was afraid of, especially for a significant amount of money. Plus, while the OLEDs look gorgeous, they are often calibrated to look pleasing rather than accurate, whereas the iMac comes perfectly calibrated out of the box, and this was important because of my YouTube work. And I will just say it one more time, the perfect scaling of everything. The default zoom and font size in every app is absolutely spot on. Writing on this thing is a joy. And also just the ergonomics of it all, the stand and the build quality. Simply put, if you are in the business of writing text of any kind as a package and as a screen, this to me is unbeatable. Now, when it comes to size, I am not insecure about it, because even though 3 inches would make a difference, noticeably so, still even with 24, when I split my screen in half and I focus on one side, the other is already in my peripheral vision. Like, I can't really keep track of everything even if I wanted to. So yeah, <laughs> 3 extra inches would be nice for bragging rights, but not much more, at least for my workflow. Now. Let's talk about performance in daily use and do some tests and comparisons with the M4 Pro. Before we jump into the numbers, I will say that in everyday use, I haven't noticed a difference in performance between the base model iMac and the M4 Pro. Usually I have multiple browser windows open, multiple cursor windows open, Xcode, and even occasionally DaVinci Resolve that I forgot to close, and my memory usage is hovering around 70%, which is totally fine. But speaking of the M4 Pro, let's quickly go over the rest of the specs to set the stage for performance testing. It's the M4 Pro with 10 performance and 4 efficiency cores, 24 gigabytes of RAM and 1 terabyte of storage. I won't be doing any standard benchmarks, but I will compare the performance on real projects I have worked on, compiling my app in Xcode, rendering the same 4K timeline in DaVinci Resolve, measuring requests per second on the same Dino backend, and rendering the same 3 3D scene in Blender. So let's get started. I will perform the same test three times on each machine, first to warm up any caches, and then I will give you the average on the second and third run. First, compiling my app. The same exact project on both machines, and the iMac was able to build it from scratch in about 19 seconds, whereas on the MacBook Pro it took 18.5. So it tells us two things. First, the M4 and the M4 Pro chip have exactly the same performance cores, and second, Xcode is not really optimized at all to take advantage of any extra cores. Next, Dino, which is a single core performance test. This one might surprise you. I wrote a test endpoint that returns a hello world message and adds a UUID just to make it do some work at least. And yeah, very surprisingly, the iMac consistently did better. I tested a few times, but always by a few percent, the base M4 was better than the M4 Pro. Go figure. Now for the part where I expected the MacBook Pro to completely blow the base M4 out of the water is multi-core performance. So we have a test with DaVinci Resolve. It's the same timeline and maybe surprisingly, they did equally well. I think the reason is that the majority of the encoding is done by a dedicated coprocessor in both chips. So if you're looking for a machine that can also render video, the base model is more than good enough. But if you're going to be doing some special effects or advanced rendering, let's look at Blender. And this is where the MacBook Pro actually significantly outperformed. So the scene took 1 minute and 54 seconds on the iMac to render, whereas it took only 48 seconds on the MacBook Pro. So there you go. The one software that is actually optimized to fully take advantage of all the cores is unsurprisingly open source. So I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description.